Hi, my name is Mike. I'm one of the senior education consultants here at the POPs. Um, but I do specialise mainly in mathematics, computer science and physics. I'm trying to expand to the other sciences, but that's sort of a hobby at the moment uh, for another time. In this video, I get to have the privilege to talk to you guys about how to get into UCL for mathematics. Now, it's a really, really good university to be able to get into. In fact, in a very recent video that we did, I actually ranked this as one of my S tier universities. You can find a link to that video right up here. <laughs> um, and it's not an easy course to get into. In fact, in this last academic cycle, the 2024-2025 cycle, only 45% of applicants got in. Interestingly enough, um, almost very impressively, that is less than half the percentage of people that we've worked with that have actually gotten into UCL for this course. So actually, if you really, really like what you hear us talk about in this video, don't forget to give this a like and subscribe. Maybe have a look at the information below and get in touch with us to see how we can help you get into UCL for mathematics. But whilst I have a whole multitude of other things I could talk about for this course, here are my top five tips for how you can get into UCL for, math for mathematics. <laughs> Now my first top tip in getting into a university like this for mathematics is make sure that your understanding of mathematics is really strong. I know I'm a little bit of a broken record on this point, I've been saying it in quite a lot of videos, but you need to make sure that your understanding of A-level mathematics, and ideally A-level further mathematics, is very, very strong. And you want to be aiming for an A-star in a both of those. Or, and then maybe getting an A in another science, uh, for instance. If you're doing the IB, you want to be doing mathematics at higher level, most certainly, um, and maybe additional sciences as well, and you want to be aiming for like a minimum of a 40. If you're doing other courses, um, maybe because you're in a different country that doesn't quite match those uh, qualifications, I think on UCL's uh, many sort of university pages, there's a lot of guides actually to what they give in terms of the recommendation based on the qualification that you are taking. Um, so definitely take a look at that if you are in that position as an international student. Um, on top of that, they do have their admissions tests. So one thing that does come up quite commonly are the step papers uh, for different things. But I know that a few people who have actually applied for this have also uh, mentioned that they are taking the Advanced Extension Award and within the offer that they've been given, they've also been uh, provided a grade that they've had to get for that. Um, so do double check sort of the, the, what they want for you for admissions requirements um, and uh, make sure that you're really, really active with your understanding of mathematics further and further maths if you're doing it. Make sure that you're going well and above beyond what you're taught in school to really, really stand out against the rest of the competition. Now my second tip goes into a little bit of detail of what I've just talked about in terms of admissions tests. Um, one thing that I highly encourage you to get ready for is the stack paper. You usually take this at the very end of your uh, time at sixth form, um, maybe in June, just before you actually intend to start university. Um, and you will likely be taking a step two and a step three paper. It takes time <laughs> to prepare for these tests. I would be looking at the very, very latest, the beginning of year 13, to actually start getting used to the questions and practicing papers on a regular basis. We actually have a whole video on this uh, right up here if you want to go follow it, where we talk about all the different ways that you can prepare for the step papers um, and actually do the very, very best you can. But really, really make sure that you take some time to get ready for these. If you are only ready to start the out though, and you've not had a lot of experience working with admission test questions, there are other papers you could look at for inspiration. So the mathematical aptitude test uh, with Oxford, if you look at their section B, they have uh, sort of extended questions of multiple parts to them, not too unlike many of the questions in step papers. So definitely take a look through some of those. Um, in terms of other mathematics tests that you can take, maybe even looking at past paper questions from the Advanced Extension Award could also be very good. I know that's not too common nowadays, but it is still something that people take. It is still something that you can take as a nice addition to your A-level in mathematics or further, math further mathematics to really demonstrate to the university your level of critical thinking, which is really what they're looking for amongst their applicants. 
my third top tip for getting into this university, just because it is so high for mathematics, not just within the UK, but globally, is make sure that you show your enthusiasm for mathematics. There are multiple ways that you could be doing this. Um, so competitions tend to be a really, really strong avenue for this. Looking at the UK Maths Challenge or the uh, American Maths Challenge, depending on, I guess, where you are in the world, you can get uh, involved in competitions such as this. There are some competitions that you can actually take online in terms of uh, mathematics competitions. Uh, that is sort of assessed globally. Um, if you're not necessarily looking at primarily mathematics, you might want to be looking at other sort of science or computer science olympiads um, that actually have a crossover with mathematics. It's good to start early in the research for what is available though, because there are, you know, once a competition date is passed, that's it. <laughs> you can't really take part in it. So I would highly recommend, really, at the, like September or October, in your final, well, not in your final year, your penultimate year, that you are looking ahead in your calendar and you're seeing what competitions are available when, what will I actually be able to do to demonstrate my passion for mathematics as part of that. We count that as being super curricular, and there are other things that you can do in regards to that. You could join a maths camp, you can go to a summer school um, to look at an interesting sort of maths course on a topic that you haven't really explored in school. You might want to do the same thing online, you might go to a lecture. You might also want to engage in some very strong academic reading in mathematics as well. UCL don't really offer so much in the way of reading this, but you can look at Oxford and Cambridge for guidance in terms of knowing where to start with that. But don't leave it too late to actually not just demonstrate your passion for mathematics, but prepare how you're going to demonstrate it in advance. This leads me on to my next point, which is very, very natural, is that you have to work on your UCAS personal statement, and that has to take a lot of time. I know going into um, actually like the next round of applications, the style of the UCAS form is changing in comparison to previous years. It used to be that you had a one essay, um, and now you actually have the same amount of space split into three different questions. Um, one specifically about sort of why you love the subject or why you want to do the course, um, in their own words. The second one uh, being about sort of what academic experience do you have to back that up? And the third one being sort of a question to allow you to add in extra information. For UCL, they are quite academically oriented. You still want to be able to talk with the same kind of percentage, maybe as, as you sort of split up as you would expect to have written if you were doing an essay, in terms of how much do you talk about academics and how much do you talk about supercurriculars. Um, it does take a little bit of time to know, especially given it's a new system, how to split that up, but make sure that actually you're really ticking that sort of academic rigour uh, for the personal statement. And if you don't necessarily have a lot of that, if you've got more industrial experience, how does mathematics sort of work within or show itself within an industrial environment through the work experience that you obtain? We actually have a video as well on the how to get work experience in STEM. If you are actually thinking you're a little bit low on this, you can find it in the video here. <laughs> and my final tip um, with actually getting into UCL, and is very, very apt considering that I work for a tutoring company, is work very closely with a tutor. There are lots of aspects of this application that you need to be able to sort of be aware of, you need to think about, you need to go through to really maximize your chance of success. That can be a lot to try to organize, you know, as somebody who's also just trying to get through secondary school, you know, get the A-levels or the IB that they need to be able to transition to university, as well as working out what they want to, you want to do in the future. We can help with all of these aspects of that, including things like taking admissions tests or interview practice, um, or basically anything that you can think of that requires you to have a really, really strong application for the most competitive universities out there. Um, and UCL is already very high for mathematics. It's still rising <laughs> in this case. Um, so it's really, really good to be able to have the similar kind of mindset you might have for Oxford or Cambridge with UCL, taking out maybe sort of like the intense mathematical interview portion of it. Um, so you come to, if you come to us, we can most certainly help with these things. If you've really liked what you've heard and seen in this video, 
then you can actually give us a like and subscribe. We'd be really, really appreciative of it. You might know somebody also that is hoping to get into UCL for mathematics. Send this video along to them. I'm sure that they would appreciate it. They would hopefully love you forever if you do. <laughs> but if you have maybe a little bit of experience um, in applying for UCL, maybe you've already done it yourself or you're thinking about um, actually other ways that you might benefit in getting into UCL um, or you need a further assistance, feel free to talk about things in the, the comments section and we'd be more than happy to sort of respond and continue that going. We'd love to hear from you guys uh, in these things. Um, but if you do need our help, you can find the information on screen, um, you follow those details and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. <laughs> but if we don't hear from you, best of luck with your application and we hope to hear from you soon. <laughs>